Justin with Spikes and Gills. I want to show you my Garmin Striker 4 ice fishing flasher setup. I've found that it's the most inexpensive ice fishing flasher out there that you can get on the market today. Today it's actually $130 at Walmart, but two years ago when I bought this Garmin Striker 4, I got it for $100, $30 less. And still, in searching and looking for other ice fishing flasher, sonar, depth finder, fish finders out there uh, that are inexpensive, that are at least under $200. I couldn't find any. This has been the only one I've been able to find. Like I wanted to get some that were similar to the Humminbird, the Humminbird Helix 5s and 6s, 7s, whatever, and those Vexilars that are like over $350, $400. And that they actually have more very expensive Garmin ice fishing sonars and flashers as well out there with like live scope and all that stuff. But yeah, but this Garmin Striker 4 is very inexpensive, very uh, obtainable for those that don't want to break the bank or that don't want to spend a grand or more on a ice fishing flasher setup. So here, what you see is actually a cooler. This is a a, a gift I got from work, believe it or not. The, I'm sure you know this, because I'm sure you've been searching for an ice fishing setup for yourself, for a flasher, or fish finder, depth finder, sonar, ice fishing sonar out there, for yourself to use ice fishing, and they normally all come with a carrying case that they sit in, so that, you know, to keep them, you know, help keep them, uh, off the ice and keep them out of the weather and all that. But this is actually just a cooler. It was actually a gift. It's a makeshift carrying case for my Garmin Striker 4 because these Garmin Striker 4s, you can get them for around $100, you know, $100, $130. And they don't come with a carrying case to put them in, to set them on the cold ice and to keep them out of the rain and snow and all that stuff. So what I did was take this cooler that I got from work as a gift. You can buy one. You can get these for like less than thirty dollars. These little coolers. It comes with a nice carrying handle here to carry it. And I have my Garmin Striker 4 set up in this cooler. I have what I did was take a pine board and I cut it to size. The base of this cooler is actually a cut to size and shape piece of pine board, about an inch thick pine board. And then I cut another piece to size to fit, uh, to go lengthwise, to make a little carrying, like to make a little spot for my 12 volt battery. So what you need to buy to set up, hook up and run your Garmin Striker 4 is a carrying case similar to this cooler I got here. And you need to buy a one inch thick and uh, probably like eight inch wide and one inch thick pine board to cut the size for your base to screw the base of the Garmin Striker 4 to. So the bases of these ice fishing sonar striker, is the bases of these Garmin Striker 4s have to be screwed down whether to the side of your boat or kayak or, into, or in your carrying case for ice fishing. It takes a couple screws. So I've got the base of the Garmin Striker 4 screwed to my pine board that I got at the bottom of my cooler here. And then I also, I had to buy a 12 volt battery. This is actually from Wild Game Innovations. I bought this from Walmart as well. This 12 volt battery was very cheap. It was right around 10 bucks. So for $110, I actually had everything I needed to set up a flasher for ice fishing, for jigging through the ice. So about a $10, $12, 12-volt battery. It's a rechargeable battery. I did buy, that day actually, I did buy the, the charger for the 12-volt battery. That was also pretty cheap. That wasn't more than 20 bucks. So I'll keep, and I actually do have in here the battery tester. 
I have the Minn Kota digital battery meter, so I can check to make sure my battery's still at 12 volts, make sure it's fully charged. If it's not, then I'll plug in the, the wall charger to it, charger full before taking the Garmin Strike 4 out ice fishing. And it also, what's nifty about this setup is I have all this storage space. I've got, I actually have some little jigging heads. I got some lures in here for my jigging poles. And it fits all the, it fits the transducer cable. All this cable I got here to stick the transducer down through the ice. I have that coiled up in there and that fits in there nice and neat. I've got, I actually got a battery battery meter to check the charging, to check the voltage of my battery. I'll put a fish scale in here. I'll put other lures and stuff for my jigging poles in here. It makes a great little carrying case. This is extra storage. It fits the Garmin Striker 4 perfect. And what I do is when I, on a ha I'm out on the ice fishing, I'll set her right down. And this cooler actually pushes down folds out of the way of the Garmin Striker 4 so it gets good light so I can see the screen really well. And it also and when packing up to leave the ice I can or when moving from hole to hole when jigging I can just close the top and I can carry it just as is or I can zip it up to keep the snow and rain out of it. But it's pretty nifty. It's a nice little setup. You were probably wondering about the what I have on the transducer here. The transducer, so that now so that the transducer will stay upright in this position. This is the position that this Garmin Striker 4 transducer is supposed to sit down in the hole under the ice. Not like this, not sideways or upside down. Not like that. It has to sit just as is. And now some people use PVC pipes to put the, tr the Garmin Striker 4 transducer and cable down through. What they'll do is they'll, they'll buy the right size PVC pipe and set the transducer down through the pipe and then get another piece of pipe and make a cross piece so that it sits down in the hole. The transducer will go down through the PVC pipe and it will set sit like this upright in the direction it's supposed to face and then that other cross piece will hold the transducer cable from going all the way down through the hole. So some people set it up that way, but I found this to be the best because it keeps it, it gives me more room in the hole. I can actually have this sitting in the hole with an ice fishing trap tip up. I can have the whole, the reel with all the ice fishing line and the, and the ice fishing trap down in the hole along with my transducer and I can watch my, my shiner or ice fishing bait. I can see that on my screen of the striker four and then I could also see if there's any fish playing with my bait ahead of time and I've got a scene where I was doing just that and my and I could see that a, a trout was playing with my shiner and I knew that the trap was gonna go up in any moment and here's that scene now that's my bait around eight feet about seven at about seven feet you can see the solid marks right about at the seven foot mark is where my bait is and the all the other flashing going on between eight and twelve is a fish oh there's something above the bait too I think the baits being played with right now I think this flag's going to go up any minute the baits being played with right now I expect this flag to go up any minute I expect this one to go up. He's got it. Sweet. Nice. I knew it. 
Oh, it's chirping. Let's go get him. Oh, yeah. I knew that was going to go up. That's awesome. Sweet. The Garmin's chirping. There's a fish on. It was spinning. Huh. So as you saw, I, I could see my bait. I could plainly see the bait, where it was, what depth it was at, where I set it, on the screen of the Garmin Striker 4. And I could see that it was being played with with a trout. I could see a fish was after the bait. And then the flag, as you saw, the flag went right up and moments later. So the Garmin Striker 4 works great. And this setup I have here for my, for the transducer works great. It gives me all that ample room I need in my hole, in my 8 inch hole. I actually happen to have this transducer and my ice fishing trap in a 6 inch hole. That hole was 6 inches and it fit all this. This plus the trap in that 6 inch hole. But I have 8 inch auger as well. I'll use 8 inch holes too. So what I have here, it just pulled out of its position, but I have a twisty tie at the bottom holding it all in place. But this is, believe it or not, this is a plastic tube that had candy in it that I got in my Christmas stocking. And I have, I still have, I have more of these if I need to replace it. I get these in my stocking all the time. It's those candy cane shaped candy tubes with the red, the top of it, the, the cover of it is a red horseshoe shaped, candy cane shaped cover and it looks like a candy cane and it's filled with like Reese's peanut butter cups or lemon heads or Mike and Ike's or whatever or whatever candy that the tube is filled in and it's those candy tubes that people will get in their stockings at Christmas time that's that's what that is it's just one of those plastic tubes it's the perfect shape and size and length to fit the cable of the transducer through and I'll have that sitting down I can it holds that transducer upright at the bottom of the ice fishing hole so it could be in the right position and it and I found that that works great It also fills with water when you stick it down in the ice fishing hole the tube will fill with water and that Keeps it more taut and upright and that helps it stay in it in position down in the hole So it's not floating around and moving around on you you can actually jig with your jigging pole and lure with this at the side down in on the side of the hole and you can watch your lure on the screen of the Garmin Striker 4 and you can see and watch if any fish are coming up to hit your lure. So yeah, the setup works. The setup is very inexpensive and practical. It works great. It doesn't break the bank. So there you have it. That's a great setup. Hey, smash that like button for me if you could. It helps the algorithm boost this video out further, get more impressions, more likes, comments, views, all that good stuff. Hey, click subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to Spikes and Gills so you'll be notified of all short form and long form content. If this video was helpful in any way, if you learned anything or were entertained or, or just enjoyed watching this video, definitely click subscribe so you'll be notified of all future uploads by Spikes and Gills. Greatly appreciate it. Hey, hit that like button on your way out. See you next time. We already got tons of uh Well, it's reading over here. I'll show you. Here we got. Yeah, so it's reading 11.4 feet. We got 11.4 feet here. It's pretty deep. Yeah, let's go to uh, Flasher. See if there's any activity down there. There's a bunch of f stuff flashing right here. There's a few little lines. Yeah, let's um. Yeah, there might be some activity down there. Oh. 
Oh, there is a lot of flashing going on on the flasher. Could be so. So 11.4 feet for depth from where the transducer sits. We got 30, water temp is 39 degrees, 38 degrees. That's probably, that's going down though. Yeah, that hasn't caught up yet. But the water temp's gonna be right around 32 degrees, I'd say. But look, there's some lines, a bunch of flashing going. On. It could be the cracking of the ice, though. Didn't think, yeah, there's, it's so cold, the ice is cracking all around me. You might be able to hear it. And that might be what's making that flash. Yeah, let's, well, that's below the hole. Yeah, so that could be fish activity. I'm gonna believe it is. Yeah, I see the temp's going down. It hasn't caught up yet to the actual water temp. That'll be right around 32 degrees. We've got a good 11 feet of water here under the ice. So in all in all, if the ice wasn't here, it'd probably be like a 12 foot hole right here. All right, let's... Cool. Okay, I gotta get the trap set up. Yeah. All right, let's get a tip up in there. See you in a minute. Yeah, the old Garmin's already beeping. But that might just be the bait. Well, we got the baits right here. That's the bait, guys. There's something at six feet. I'm checking it out. That's where I have my bait, about four or five feet, four and a half feet. That right there is a, another fish. There's probably already a trout playing with it. Yeah, the she's chirping already. That's what the garments do. They make a chirpy sound. Yeah, see the water temp's almost to 32. So there's the bait. About four and a half feet. We got some fish activity right there around six feet. He might come up to get it. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's go put the other one. I'm gonna put the other one up right over here. And I'm gonna do two more beyond that. Flashes would be an actual fish, maybe a trout or a bluegill or something, playing with my shiner. That's my shiner. There's something there hanging out right there. I had the bait below six feet earlier on. And when I pulled it up, I saw a bunch of activity around four feet, and I had the bait around six and a half feet, so I pulled it up close to four, and it something hit it, and it tripped the flag on the tip up. So there's definitely something down there. It could just be sunfish. Probably a bunch of bluegill right around here. So if I could hurry up and get jigging, I could probably jig me up some. Catch some bluegills on the jigging pole. Hopefully. Yeah, oh, they're showing red and stuff around six feet. Oh, see, she's chirping. There's definitely a fish down there. So there's something messing around with my bait. The Garmin's chirping, and there's, she is definitely showing activity besides my bait. That's my bait right around the four-foot mark. There's something hanging there. Every now and then there'll be some red flashes and it, the Garmin will chirp there, it just chirped again. So there's definitely something down there playing with that bait. There was something playing with the bait at one of those other ones too. So I'm expecting one of these to go up any minute. We've got a fish on. Yes, we do. That right there somewhere. Somewhere where it won't. That's good right there. Oh, well that's fine. Yeah, okay, we got one on. Hurt my knees, but it's going this way. I wonder what we got. It just spun. That line's going out that way. I wonder if we got it. I think I got it, guys. Got a. Got it. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Nice trout. Nice brook trout, yes! It's a nice one. Sweet! Oh, there's some weeds with it. Yep, got some weeds. Let's get those out of there. That's a nice one, guys. It looks like there's activity down. Looks like we got some fish activity between four and six feet. It's red. The Garmin here is saying 8.4 feet. Okay, eight feet of water. Looks like there's 
We got all the flashing going on around four, between four and six feet. There's definitely something down there. I'm gonna put my bait at about four feet. 